The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey guys, thank you for attending our uh, JL Communications Coffee and Conversation Series. Uh, you will receive a $10 gift card for your time, so uh, make note of that. We'll be having these every Friday in the month of October, and um, really good content last week on cybersecurity. This week we have uh, some veterans and some pros from Nice in Contact uh, to talk about the uh, customer experience journey. A um, um, little bit, just kind of a commercial for us. You know, JL, most of y'all know us, but we're here to advocate for you as the customer. So um, these series are kind of important from an educational standpoint because they hit home with uh, different technologies that are out in the world that you might not be aware of. Um, again, we have, uh, we're talking about contact center and the customer experience journey. And we have on the, on the uh, line here, Brandon Tate and Austin Holverson from Nice In Contact. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having us. You're welcome. Um, I do want to remind anybody that if you have questions, please ask them in the chat section of your uh, web uh, experience, and we will pause um, um, for feedback and, and get some perspectives from these two uh, gentlemen um, there. As always, you know, we, we do these series and we would love to follow up with a conversation or an in-person meeting obviously uh, respecting all social guidelines, distancing in place. Um, so without further ado, I'm gonna uh, have uh, a poll question we're gonna put up there real quick. And um, just some feedback from the audience. And I don't see the poll question, but I don't know if anybody else can. Brandon, can you or anybody? Yeah, yeah I, I can. I can see it. Yeah, okay. See it. Okay. Sorry, I don't. I guess I'm sharing. Um, give it a few more seconds. <clears throat> okay. Um, guys, I cannot see the results of that poll, but. Um, oh. It looked like 50% said yes, 25% uh, said, hey, what's a customer experience manager? And then I think another 25% was no. Got you. So that's some good feedback from uh, the current attendees. And that kind of resonates home with kind of the customer experience journey. And, and while I think a lot of customers, you know, understand what a contact center is, they just might not know how to apply a contact center in their organization. Um, so Brandon, Austin, without further ado, go ahead and take it. Awesome. Well, well thanks, Sean. We really appreciate uh, you guys setting this up and appreciate everyone on the call today. Um, I'll turn it over to Brandon. And, and like uh, Sean was saying, if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free and throw them in the chat. You know, we do want to make this interactive. So uh, we're happy to answer any questions. And Brandon, let's make sure and touch on um, through the presentation what a, a customer um, experience manager is um, for those that maybe didn't know um, as they answered the poll question. So uh, thanks for having us and I'll let Brandon jump into uh, today's presentation. Okay, let's see, did they? You should have the screen, Brandon. I yeah, I didn't see that uh, it was it was letting me share it. There we go. There you go. Okay, can you guys see that? <clears throat> okay, so um All right, every time I go to move this, it uh, kicks me out of my screen. So thanks again for, for having us here. As, as kind of an industry leader for contact center and cloud contact center, we want, we want to kind of start off by just sharing with you guys some of the trend information that we see going on in the, in the, uh, in the marketplace today. And so obviously um, consumers have higher expectations with, with, um, 
COVID and everything that's kind of happened with that, uh, we've obviously seen that there was initially some patience, you know, that was given to businesses and organizations on behalf of the customers as they recognized, you know, we're all kind of being thrown up in the air and landing on our heads sometimes. And uh, there was a little bit of patience, but now it's kind of swiftly returned back to having a high expectation of customer service. And, and organizations are expected, even though COVID has happened and taken place and we're still in the midst of it, uh, there's still kind of a high level of expectation that, that businesses kind of have their stuff together and, and are able to take care of their customers. 89% um, of businesses are expected to compete mainly on customer experience. And 59% and are picking vendors solely based on the customer experience. And I think most people on this call today would agree with these numbers. I mean, that's kind of in the world that we live in today. I mean, it's a lot of times, um, you know, businesses, your competitors, especially if you're not the low cost, low price leader in the, in the space, your competitors are going to do everything they can to commoditize your industry and try to make it seem like, you know what, an apple's an apple, you might as well buy ours because ours is cheaper. And so if that's not the case, and you know, quite frankly, not every business is the, is the low cost leader or the, the low priced uh, offering in the space, um, the one thing that we can do, the thing that is separating and differentiating businesses today is, is the customer experience. And so uh, on the contrary, if we, if we elect to not make that a priority in our organization, then we see some of these other statistics that might uh, lay ravage and, 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 and have negative effects on our business. And so um, we obviously can see that uh, we know you've all heard the statistic, but it's six to seven times more expensive to retain um, uh, or, or excuse me, to, to acquire a new customer than to retain your existing one. 95% um, of customers, they, they always want to tell the bad experiences. Very few times do we go give pats on the back and tell about the great experiences. The last one kind of resonates with me and I know that that's held true for me and, and um, you know, we, we've, most of us on this call have left a longtime customer, a longtime business relationship because of lack of personalization or lack of customer experience. And so as we talk specifically about a contact center, um, you know, sometimes uh, we might not even realize we have one. We, we might not even refer to it as a contact center. It could be a, a call center that used to be long, uh, long-term uh, uh, referred to as a, as a call center. And that was primarily because the, the contacts that were coming in were, were voice contacts. They were phone calls. And, and, and so, let me stop Brandon, real quick. Yeah. Here, go ahead. Contacts, and we're not just talking about inbound. We're talking about inbound, outbound, mm -hmm. you know, kind of the whole, how you can touch your customer either way. Right. Exactly. The conversations that are coming in. And so, so the, the business, the customers of ours, that need to contact us for whatever reason or for whatever reason we need to reach out and contact them. So it's an inbound outbound relationship. And <clears throat> basically this is kind of wrapping up the, the kind of nuts and bolts of what you need to be able to do in a, in a successful contact center, how you need to be able to effectively manage that. You've got to obviously route your contacts in and out. You've got to be able to schedule and train your agents. So uh, we got to have a, the right amount on the right day to fill the volume of calls that we might have coming in and then train them up so that they are saying what we want them to say. Then we need to know is what we're saying working? You know, we've got to have some sort of ability to survey. So on this call today, for example, we were able to do uh, some surveying to get just a, a snapshot and a glimpse into what everyone's experience is and what that feedback might look like. And that's important to, uh, to be able to go forward and manage if, and then we've got to have some ability for change management. So if, if we, if we find through the surveying and analytics that what we're saying is not working, we, we've got to be able to on the fly go and tweak and change that. And across the top, we've got just a few, this is just a very small amount of the different organizations, different companies that are out there. And most of them are cloud in nature uh, these days, but, you can, you can go to each of these directly and individually and purchase from them to have them help you with that individual piece of the, of the, uh, of the contact center management that we just kind of went through. Or, you know, down at the bottom, you can just go with the Nice and Contact CX1 platform, which is what we offer.
So um, I, I want to recognize you all as you know, you've been a leader in the Magic Quad, the Gardner Magic Quadrant for how many consecutive years? It's it's been a few, hasn't it? It's 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 been a hot minute. So I mean, it's about ready to come out. Another uh, yeah. another new edition is ready to hit the presses here uh, shortly. Uh, Forester is another one that just came out. It comes out every two years uh, in Q in Q3. So it just uh, came out uh, last month, and we further distance ourselves up into the right uh, with the Forester waves. So excellent. And I think something too, just to add to kind of that last slide and what we were talking about is if you think about the workforce today and the younger generations, you know, as we talk about the difference between call centers and contact centers, um, you know, customers today want to have multiple ways to interact with your business, um, especially younger generations. They don't want to pick up the phone and call someone. They want to, you know, chat with you on your website. They want to text you. They want to send an email. And so being able to have a contact center that truly has multiple ways to contact you just allows that customer experience to be even better versus just waiting on hold, um, going through the call queue. Uh, they want an answer now. And the beauty of a contact center is it allows that agent to be able to handle multiple communications all within one browser, all within one window, and it makes it really easy. And the last thing I wanted to touch on a lot of times what we'll hear is, hey, a cloud contact center solution is really expensive. But what we really find when we kind of dive into a ROI analysis is when you add in all of these products that they're per you maybe you're purchasing separately for your business, it actually a lot of times is more expensive because you're paying for SMS, you're paying another company for chat, you're paying another company to manage your workforce. So I think those are some, some great things um, you know, to look at. And the beauty of CX1, is it's our technology um you know we're not borrowing other parts for our car it's all ford parts made for the ford car and it makes that experience really seamless if you're um, a customer if you're an agent or if you're a supervisor it's really just one experience so and you and you touched on one thing cloud right and, and yep. in this pandemic that's kind of a key factor right now is to when things happen you can now work from home, work from anywhere as an yep. agent, right? So there's a lot of advantages uh, yep. looking at that cloud technology. Yeah, and, and Sean, you know what was interesting? I had, we had a customer that um, they had an on-prem uh, contact center solution and um, they couldn't move their agents to work from home because the technology wouldn't allow them to be effective and efficient at home. And so now the question isn't, hey, you know, is, are you working, are your agents working from home? I think that's the case um, almost across the board. It's how are they being productive? And our tools allow managers to be able to track their performance, um, their engagement to see how productive they are. And so, um, you know, that's really what it's all about is just making an easier experience um, and being able to help save your company time and money that you have tools that can track, you know, how long people are on hold for, how long, you know they've been engaged in a chat with a with a person so anyways um, those are just a few things that uh, i think COVID has kind of brought about for us excellent exactly that's all great points guys um thanks for sharing that um austin the and that's a great point it's you know this this at this point pretty much everybody's obviously we're six months plus into into COVID, so everybody's pretty pretty well uh been been a while now that they've they've been working from home or they've got their their employees or their agents working from home. Um, it's it's not just a battle of of being able to take calls from home, like Austin mentioned. It's it's can we still can accomplish these two middle pieces as far as scheduling and training the agents and then being able to get reporting or, or you know we still got to have that quality piece and be able to monitor that, not just simply be able to pat ourselves on the backs and say that we're able to take and make phone calls. Uh, the other point I want to touch on is is kind of like uh, Austin mentioned is in today's environment we're we're not and that's really why we call it a contact center or refer to it as a contact center versus a call center is that it's uh, we've got these digital channels now that uh, chat email text and social media that come into play and and our CX1 platform is very unique in that it's omni omni channel versus multi channel and so we get we get a question a lot of times what's the difference between the two? Well, multi-channel does mean that we can handle multiple uh, channels of communication into our contact center, but in a, in a very kind of more siloed uh, environment. 
versus omni-channel, we can allow one agent to be dealing with the customer on a chat. And if that chat becomes so complex in nature that it needs to rise to the level of a, you know what, I, if I could move this over to a phone call, we could get this taken care of for you much easier. We're gonna be able to seamlessly allow that same agent to transfer the chat over to a phone call and carry out the rest of the conversation with the, uh, with the customer, all while maintaining context of that entire conversation through reporting and recording of, of what happened and what took place. So um, as, as we do that, we, we make the job of the agent much more, much more easy. And uh, uh, Sean, as you mentioned, Gartner, Gartner in 2018 did a survey that uh, asked basically, you know, customers, customer experience managers, as we, as we mentioned uh, about them at the very beginning, but they asked them what, uh, um, What uh, <laughs> <laughs> they they asked them about? Gosh darn it! Um, well, I'm going to save that for another another episode. There you go. Um, contact center. We we talked about cloud, and so as we have premise, premise is the thing that's kind of uh, the old the old school. Um, it's 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 rigid. It, it it doesn't have the flexibility and agility to allow us to move and to scale and to have that flexibility that our business needs. As we as we take a step from that, um, we can kind of get the the warm fuzzy feeling of of having upgraded to the cloud. But if we if we kind of get tricked into purchasing, uh, you know, going that route across the top where we we, we purchase from all of these different individual uh, names and businesses, then we we fall into kind of this clever what I call architecture. So we've we've got some cloud architecture cloud architecture obviously combined with clever marketing. But we really ended up just purchasing individual cloud platforms, similar similarly to how we purchased premise uh, solutions in the past, and we still end up with the same systems and problems that we had when we were premise. We we're in a siloed environment. We we have these uh, plat, plat platforms and and uh, programs that maybe uh, nine times out of ten do work well together, but then. When they don't, it's a real significant problem for, for our business. And over on the right, we have really where Nice in Contact uh, and the CX1 platform resides. It's, a, it's as, as Austin mentioned, it's an all-in-one natively built from the ground up. We own all of the solutions, all of the key solutions to the contact center. We own, we manage, we develop. Uh, nobody's going to roll out a, a new implementation or, or excuse me, a new uh, update or product update without us knowing about it since it's all our solution. And uh, so we're not gonna have any situations like, um, you know, sometimes with, with your Apple phone or, or uh, your Android phone, you might have a, a, a system update and your favorite app now suddenly st doesn't work so well. And it, and it might take it a couple of days, it could take it a couple of weeks before it starts working properly. But you can't afford to have that happen with your contact center. So as we migrate away from premise, the cloud, we're going to clean up a lot of this stuff. Every everyone on this call has <laughs> has seen one of these, might even have one of these in their back closet. But a lot of this stuff is going to go away. A lot of this stuff's going to move up to the cloud, and and it's going to work a lot like your 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 Apple phone or your Android phone, in that you still do have some premise equipment. You still might have some phones, tangible phones on your desk, but all of the software updates and all of that information's going to be pushed through your internet connection out to your devices to, to upgrade them, make them have new features and capabilities. And so at the, at the end of the day, really what uh, the purpose of our CX1 platform is, is designed to do is to help, help uh, our businesses, help our customers, help our clients uh, allow and, and create customer experience and allow that to become a bold differentiator in what you do and, and set you apart from your competition. Um, Want to talk and touch on just a few um, specific uh, business outcomes. That's what we try to do: is meet with our clients and find out what they are hoping to do, what what's going to move the needle for you. And so, um, as we look at that, we can kind of control costs with with next next gear capital. Uh, control costs by improving uh, key KPIs for their business. You'll notice these are all small, medium-sized businesses. Fifty. 50 to 100 seats, uh, like like we most likely have on this call today, I would imagine. 
Um, we can improve uh, the customer satisfaction, imp improve CSAT by improving access um, to the agents for the customers. So we allow the customers to be able to get to uh, and access the agents to be able to get quicker resolution for their service or their, their, their issue that they're having. But we also empowered the agents to be able to have uh, greater integrated access with their CRM. Um, and then uh, supporting rapid growth with clear choice. Um, we do that by improving the pipeline and allowing them to have more efficient and effective outbound phone calls. We do that with our patented um, uh, no pause proactive outbound dialer. So when, when each of us, we've all had this happen and we, when you get a phone call and it's a telemarketing call, you have that pause on the other line for about two or three seconds and no one's answering. You don't even continue to wait and hold. You just hang up because you know it's a telemarketer. And with our proactive uh, personal touch outbound dialer system, we don't have that. So when, when a person answers the phone, the agent's immediately able to say hello and, and uh, get on with the phone call. And then, you know, just in final and, and kind of touching up here, um, against my greater judgment, I'm going to give you some early morning Friday math uh, statistics. Uh, five seconds in a 100 seat call center can mean $3,000 a month. So if we can improve uh, your, your average handle times, if we can improve, if we can make the agent able to get to the different pieces of information that they need to be able to take care of the, the customer's problem and issue just five seconds per call quicker over the course of, of, of 30 days in a 100 seat contact center, that's gonna mean $3,000 a month. And then a typical nice and contact deployment is gonna deliver a 20% efficiency for a business. And so that's 20 agents in a 100 seat contact center. And at 20 agents a month, that's $60,000 a month. So a lot of times, a lot of times, like Sean mentioned, cloud, it just, oh, that's expensive. I can't afford that. Really, at the end of the day, when we deliver our ROI calculator and we take uh, information from the customer that, that, that you give us, it's your data. You know, we, we, you, you know how many calls you're handling uh, or, or, or can find that out. You, you, um, you can give us the number of calls per month that you're handling, the average length of those calls, uh, some information about the number of agents, uh, what their total cost is headcount wise as far as um, salary and, and, and expense that they are per, per agent to the business. But that's all your data and we can individualize that and, and, and customize that to, to show how this, you really can't afford not to move to the cloud. This is, this is an ROI that's going to make sense and pay for itself very quickly. And once it does, it's just delivering results to the bottom line for the business. So a few questions. Um, I heard efficiency, right? Well, so you mm -hmm. can make you can make a customer's contact center very efficient and drive out those five second, you know, pauses, right? That again, that that is equal to money at, at the end exactly. of the day. Exactly, time is money. Mm -hmm. uh, I heard integrations, right? You you can integrate with probably near about any any system, right? With open APIs and things like that, right? Yes, we have over kind of an industry leading over 300 open uh, RESTful APIs. Okay, um, so I'm the customer that just sunk, you know, hundred thousand dollars into phone, a phone system two years ago, right? Do I have to scrap that? No, we we're actually phone system. That's a great question, Sean. Um, we have we're phone system agnostic. We are a carrier in a previous life when we first started. In this business, nice and contact. Uh, well, you know, we didn't do a whole lot of history, but um, we we uh, we started in the uh, call center space selling long distance cards to contact centers. So we were a carrier initially. That allows us a, a really strong foothold in this market because it differentiates us in that we offer carrier grade uh, contact center solution and quality to to our end users. And so. Um, when we when we're able to do that, um, we one thing I'll touch on while you're kind of thinking, Brandon. Um, you know whether you're a cus you know customer that's using 
you know, an on-premise phone system or you've gone with maybe a hosted option, we lay over the top of both of those. Yeah. Um, and something that I think is interesting that, you know, the environment that we're in has allowed us to do uh, via COVID is we offer a free 60-day proof of concept. Um, there's no implementation costs, there's no seat costs. And so what I think the world we're in has done has allowed customers to, if they don't have a cloud strategy today, it's, it's making them create one for the future. And so even if you guys are a, you know, a customer that's using you know, an on-prem solution today, that's great. Um, if you do wanna try and kind of get a taste for the cloud, um, we can get the solution up in as little as a week, um, a week's time, and it's free for you guys to implement and free for you to use. And so you know, I'd work with Sean and team on that because um, it's really a great offering that we have that I think allows you to maybe just kind of take a peek behind the curtains a little bit and see what cloud is about. And we can roll it out for just a small segment of your contact center. You don't have to just roll it out to everyone. You could say, hey, maybe we'll take our accounts payable department. Maybe we'll take you know, our outbound or inbound sales team and kind of roll it out to them. So I'm um, yeah, just kind of a little, get, go ahead, Sean. I'm saying it doesn't have to be everything or it could be a segment of your business, right? Yeah, it's, yeah, like if it, it, yeah, if, it, yeah, if it were me, I'd say, you know what? Because, you know, you, in my opinion, with a proof of concept, I, I just wouldn't roll it out to my entire um, contact yeah. center agents. I would pick maybe 10 agents, five agents, um, maybe a certain division um, and roll it out to them and, and see how much more effective it can be. Um, and so, yeah, that would be a recommendation I would, I would for sure try. Excellent. All right. I think we have one more poll question we're going to throw up. There we go. Do you currently have a help desk collections department or customer service department? Which are all quote unquote contact center pieces? So perfect. Let's give it a few more seconds. Okay. See if we can see the results. There we go. Half of you all said yes, and 50% said not officially, but we take calls for help, payments, etc. So, yeah, on that 50% that you know taking those help payments and things like that, that's something probably warrants a discussion on how to make that more efficient and and probably uh, add to your bottom line at that point. You know, so um, awesome. Austin, Brandon, any further thoughts today? I would just add into that survey, you know, too, if you have an outbound or inbound sales team. Um, I think a lot of times when when people think of, you know, a call center is they think of a blacked out building in Nevada just answering phone calls, you know, making phone calls, but it really is, it really can be so many different parts of, a, of an organization. And so I throw outbound and inbound sales teams um, in there as well. No, I agree. I, agree. I appreciate it. Well, gentlemen, okay. go, go ahead. No, nope. I, I was just going to say, lastly, you know, the one question we always have come up is CRMs. We integrate with pretty much every CRM out there, whether you have a homegrown CRM um, or whether it's, you know, one of the larger ones. I think we are, in terms of Salesforce, I think we're like number seventh in terms of all of the apps on Salesforce. So, um, regardless of whatever your CRM is, we'll be able to play nice with it and uh, help your agents when a call comes in, all the information about the customer will be able to pop up on the same screen. So uh, that is something that gets asked to us, but yeah, I'll just leave it there. Yeah, screen pops are awesome. I mean, it, it really does make people efficient. Um, okay, I uh, thank you all both for joining our, our coffee and conversation series. Um, guys, next week we'll be focused on multi-cloud and software solutions with Rackspace. Um, this space is obviously uh, expanding rapidly due to the pandemic and everything. And uh, we like to, to see what's going on with those guys. So again, we look forward to seeing you next week. Austin, Brandon, audience, thank you all. Thanks. Thanks guys.